April 13th, 1919, British Brigadier General Reginald Dwyer orders his men to fire on a group of Indians celebrating a festival, killing 379 unarmed Sikhs. November the 21st, 1988, a suitcase bomb explodes on board Pan Am Flight 103, killing all 259 passengers and crew and a further 11 when the exploded plane hits the town of Lockerbie. September 11th, 2001, 2,993 people lost their lives on the attack on the United States. Terror is not new, and now more than ever, it presents a horrific risk to every living soul on this planet. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. I'm Austin Deppler, a sim simple Australian who has noticed that in the entire world seems to be in a heightened state of tension. Terrorist attacks, which the Australian Defence Force defines as the use or threatened use of violence for political ends, or the use or threatened use of putting the public or any section of the public in fear, represents the 21st century's greatest threat. Now, I was going to offer you the United Nations take on terrorism, but even after the events of September 11th, the UN member states failed to reach a consensus of what terrorism actually is such as the fear and confusion surrounding it. No one is safe. On the 8th of September 2006, the United Nations Global Counterterrorism Strategy was adapted by all member states. The first time all had agreed on a common strategic approach to fight terrorism. It took five years after the 9-11 attacks, four years after the Bali bombings, three years after the Madrid train bombings, two years after the Jakarta Embassy bombing, and one year after the London bombings for the entire world to agree to enter the war on terror. And now, almost 10 years after that strategy was adapted, terror is more present than ever, and it is creeping closer and closer to home. I can't speak for everyone, but my average week of television consists of cooking and quiz shows, and, as Shirley Strawn from Skyhook said, the horror movie that is the 6.30 News. ISIL, the world's foremost terrorist group, is in our televisions, our radio and our social media. And what is more confronting to the public is that it is not always the stereotypical extremist they see. It is an ex-British citizen, an ex-American citizen, or even an ex-Australian citizen, waging a war on the land and the people they once called home. Terror attacks are scattered throughout Australia's history. The first such attack occurred in 1915, when two radical men boarded and attacked a train at Broken Hill, carrying 1,200, killing two. As it developed, so too did the level of fear. No matter where you were in the 60s and 70s, you lived in constant fear of a missile pointing at your home, your school or your town because you knew that on the other side of the world, two men were sitting with their finger over a button that could obliterate entire cities. Terrorism in Australia has escalated a lot in the past century, and as it has, it has grown in form, in intensity, and in the public consciousness. In 2011, Inspire, an online magazine published by the associates of Al-Qaeda of the Arabian Peninsula, pictured the legendary architecture and forever icon that is the Sydney Opera House, titled with the words, a suitable target. Our way of life is constantly threatened. We should not live in fear. We have an obligation to those who've already fought and died for this country, to ourselves and for our children to fight back. Not only have we lost our innocence when it comes to terrorism, but the innocence of our most innocent is lost. In Beslan, where 777 children were held, 156 were killed, the youngest two years old. In the Yazadi community in northern Iraq, an estimated 796 people, nearly all women and children, were killed. Terrorist attacks are not new. They need to be stopped no matter where they are, for the sake of our future generations. Terror has existed on our shores and foreign shores for hundreds of years, but now with the world news at our fingertips, no more can we be hidden from the truth. No matter where we are, no matter what we're doing, we stand the risk of being attacked. 
Does that bin contain only rubbish? Have the airline done a proper job in checking everyone's luggage? We're never really sure and we are never really safe. If we simply surrendered to each new threat, ours would be no planet on which to live. It is our duty to respond. No more should people live in fear of being shot. No more should people live in fear of being blown up. No more should people live in fear of being beheaded or incinerated while locked in a cage or having their death live streamed across the planet for the, for the faith they choose or the culture they are part of. To paraphrase a certain galactic princess, we are their only hope. We must fight and finish this war on terror. Thank you.